Mine will be ours, absolutely. So this game does have some swearing if you are sensitive to that. All right, are we ready for this? We're gonna do another one. So I looked it up because I wanted to make sure that I didn't screw up. So in order to get them, also their pronouns are they, them, which I love. So in order to get Milo, I need to get creativity and charm. So I was on the right track last time when we failed. I just ended up failing on too many heart events. All right, so I'll let y'all choose. You like the yellow one? I do like our spooky ghost boy. Boo Yonce. <laughs> Boo Yonce is actually really fun. Here we go. Which of these would be your favorite food? I feel like based off the last time, where wine was paired with booty, I feel like this might be Milo. Aha! Ha, ha. The booty pairing with the wine worked. A wine to die for? Well, darling, don't threaten me with a good time. Quick, suggest an afterlife destination for this soul. I'm gonna try this one. Damn it! Ew, that whole thing was not a vibe. I'm leaving Beyonce. Remind me to avoid spending time with you in the future, okay? Milo hates us. Should I just reset? We'll do it again. I'm gonna try it. Ah, Damien. Okay, well, I gotta restart. That's right. Milo is impatient. You're right, Ray. Let's try it. Damn it! All right, which book would you take to a deserted island? Famous last words. Well, it would have to be this, right? Hey, there we go. Ugh, I adore famous last words. Hollywood deaths are always so glamorous. Listen to me. Getting all a flutter over this book, Beyonce. Come sit with me so we can discuss further. We only have three weeks to woo our crushes. Let's go. You're in the middle of a rousing game of dismemberment tag. It's like hot dog tag, but with more amputations. When you duck to avoid a flying severed head, you run smack into Milo. And Calculester! Ah, Beyonce, the man of the hour. Tell me, as long as you're here, which point, which paint swatch do you prefer? Lifeless, corpse gray, or jaundice? Scalera yellow. What are we doing, you ask? Calculester, darling. Could you give a sales pitch of the time, please? I have a story poll to tally the results of. Milo and I consider ourselves experts in flipping and selling furniture. Given that Milo is an adept stylist and myself in furniture, it seemed a natural fit. At the moment, we have taken on the daunting task of refurbishing and reselling the camp dome. Adversity has never stopped Cal and Milo house flippers before. If you don't give up on something you truly believe in, you will find a way. Friend Beyonce's doubt is reasonable. However, finding a buyer might be difficult, given how dangerous the dome can be. The dome is fraught with offenses, such as uncovered power outlets, exposed wires, unmarked exits, and the rodent infestations attracted by all these rotting corpses. It's a long list of OSHA violations that needs to be addressed. <laughs> <laughs> what if a newlywed couple with a baby wanted to move here? You make an excellent point, darling. We need to make the camp dome a safe space for monsters and baby monsters alike. Baby-proofing the dome sounds like more fun than getting your nipples blown off in dismemberment tag anyway. How can you make this hellhole safe for babies? I don't want these blown off. Create more fire exits, that is, exit doors that lead directly to a bunch of fire. Since fire is a very useful resource, people might need in case of emergency. Not bold. What are you talking about, Beyonce? That's not what a fire exit is. Indeed, everyone knows that fire exits are exits designed specifically to allow a fire to exit a building, which is a stupid suggestion anyway. Why waste resources accommodating fire? Everyone knows fire makes terrible real estate customers. It has very specific sustainability requirements. It's extremely unfriendly towards neighbors and it never pays rent on time. Friend Milo is right. Also, fire is not a sentient being, and therefore cannot legally sign a mortgage. It also cannot physically sign a mortgage because it is a fire. Trying to sell a house to a fire is an amateur mistake, Beyonce. You clearly have no idea what you're talking about. I do not believe you are a house flipper material. Please leave us so that we may do our work in peace. Curses! Misunderstood again! You walk off in shame and lose minus two charm and one smart. So I lost exactly what I just gained. This is more for health laws than any corporate. <laughs> it's true, Pika. All right, let's try to get this up again. All right, Team Blue, who's ready to go hard and crush Team Red into the ground where they belong? Calculester Hewitt Packard reporting for duty to defend my team, friend Dahlia. Team Blue! Wait, friends, Team Blue? Look in the background of this selfie. Behind us, trying to steal our flag. Is that... Oh, shoot. Looks like you caught me. Who is this little bat? That's right. Team Red will be crushed into the ground where you belong. Wait. Batness doesn't seem super concerned. Why doesn't Batness seem super con- Batness? Their name is Batness! <laughs> oh, 
maybe because I was only the diversion and a much deeper plan is already in motion. A plan you will never be able to stop. You see, Team Red had a mole. I hope they don't have to get it removed. Hiding inside your team this entire time. What should we call the mole? Moly Molerson. Little would you fools ever have guessed. Soon you will suffer a great and painful betrayal. Right, Buyonce? Wink. Um, Buyonce, are you planning on betraying us? You try to jump in and defend yourself, but Batness is too fast. No, no, of course not. Hey, Buyonce, are you ready for the Ubelde Roske? Or Ubelde Oscre? How do you say double cross in pig Latin? Friends, Team Blue, it appears Batness is trying to get a secret message to possibly false friend Buyonce. Okay, you haven't even been friends with Dahlia for years, much less anticipating a capture the flag debacle. Time to clear your name before it's too late. Admit you've been in league with Team Batness, only to pretend to double cross Team Blue and really double cross Team Red. It's a triple cross. <gasps> Batness, is this true? Of course not. Buyonce is just trying to hide his betrayal. Logical error. If friend Buyonce were planning on betrayal, enemy Batness, the enemy Batness would be unaware of this plan and therefore unable to confirm or deny. You're a mastermind of espionage. Great! Now Team Blue is more unified front than ever! Screw this! I'm gonna assassinate the Chancellor! Oh my god, their face! Lit! Victory selfie! Everyone say, Team Blue! But this time, no Batness in the background. The picture turns out adorable, as does your victory. I really want to sit with this Mothman. You happen upon Joy, groveling in front of Milo. You're pretty sure you've never seen Joy grovel before. It's kind of unsettling. Um, no, I am not groveling. I am posing a dignified query to Milo that just so happens to be performed on my hands and knees. No head? Is she given that mouth? Anyway, Milo, please help me out here. I'm in the middle of a quick summer adventure that is just important enough to justify a full episode arc. I'm sorry, Joy. I would really love to help with whatever you just said, but I'm terribly busy right now with important Reaper business. Really? Because it looks to me like you're browsing Etsy for a new cloak which is important business. My uniform must be somber, yet trendy. I can't afford to go out of fashion. I lose all my credibility. But the fate of monster kind depends on taking down Univertica. I really need your help, Milo. Don't you want to save the world? Is taking down this Univertica really equivalent to saving the world, though? I mean, everyone can make a difference, no matter how small their actions. But just look at everything Univertica's already destroyed. At least two urban outfitters, not that, <laughs> destroy all of them, have been demolished by her nefarious plans, and she has her sights on flattening the Smoothie King on 3rd Street. Well, now we gotta stop with the smoothies. You know, we can't let anybody destroy a Smoothie King. Well, I've always been more of a Jamba Juice person myself, so I think I'll pass. I mean, I feel that. Damn, Joy's fighting Univertica again. This season of the Coven must be slow. Clearly, one of your friends is in the right here. And it just so happens to be the one you're trying to bone. Joy, Milo can consult the dead for you. If you support them on Patreon. Friendship is never an excuse to work for free. Booyonce makes a good point. Actions speak louder than words. Unless you don't value my help as much as you value the other witches. No, not at all. Your work is totally just as valid and important as theirs. It's just that, um, I figured the whole, like, repayment of saving the world would be... Ah, but saving the world doesn't put avocado toast on the table. We indie seancers and necromancers need to be need to pay our rent too, you know. Not avocado toast. Er, fine, you got me. I'll become a Patreon. How's five dollars a month sound? Well, of course. I'll be grateful for whatever you pay, darling. But five dollars will only get you to the bronze tier. <laughs> Come through microtransactions. Bronze tier Patreons get early access to my selfies and a merch discount, but my Platinum Patreons get a chance at a full spirit raising once a month and a limited edition Milo sweatband. <laughs> Fine. Here's the pledge money. Can you raise Rabaru now? Oh, didn't you read the terms and conditions? I can only do so many seances. My time is precious. So I limit it to three spirit consultations for three Patreons to choose at random. And it looks like this month's winners are... Milo Crackhead 45, X Ghost Fetishist X, and Joy Johnson Jojima. No wait, that's John Jojima Joe. My bad. What? No fair. The world is at stake here, and I'm your friend. Can't you make an exception for me? Well, that wouldn't be very fair, would it? All my followers are my friends. 
can't play favorites just because your seance would prevent countless deaths. Ugh, whatever. This has been a waste of my time. I'll just bribe Polly with some distilled spirits to talk to Rabaru for me. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> well, it's just you and me, Beyonce, darling. Oh, and ex ghost fetishes, ex spirit. He wants raised. What can I do for you, my darling Patreon? Oh, it looks like he wants the ghost of a leather daddy dom from 1865. Um, I don't, uh, feel quite comfortable doing that. <laughs> you know, Booyance, since that slot is open, perhaps you'd like me to raise a spirit for you? I don't mind bending the rules for someone such as yourself. Nice! You request the spirit of Marquis de Lafayette, history's greatest wingman. He does not disappoint. Well, that sure is a choice, right? I mean, if you're gonna ask a Grim Reaper to raise up a spirit for you, might as well be a leather daddy from the past. It's this, this one or that one? Oh, okay, 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 I got the one that I wanted. Any sad effect is now doubled for you, for better or worse. You're sharing a hammock, cuddled up close with each other. And you're both checking your phones. Suddenly, Milo's phone starts blowing up. Granted, Milo's phone is always blowing up, but right now, it's worse than usual. La la la, another day, another deep. Oh, oh my god, uh, this is a little awkward, isn't it? Well, not awkward for you because you don't know yet, and I shouldn't tell you. But, like, I can't resist a little gossip. Listen, Beyonce, I don't usually disclose proprietary information, but... I just got a gig for next week to collect your soul. <gasps> Not mine! Milo going to reap your soul? That sounds super terrifying and also a little bit hot. You ask Milo if this means you're going to die next week. Short answer, yep, you're totally gonna die. Long answer, life, death, and fate are weird and messy, and it's hard to say 100% because of the quantum nonsense, but if I'm getting the gig, yeah, you're gonna die. Congrats, I'm ready. Holy shit! This is the most awkward news you've ever received while lounging in a hammock. You start to freak out. No, Beyonce, don't freak out. I'm an expert, and I promise you, it's not as scary as it seems. Death reminds us of the profound, infinite beauty of life. And realistically, it's not like you're immortal or anything. Sorry to burst your bubble, but death was going to find you eventually, boo. TBQH, I'm actually doing you a huge favor by letting you know ahead of time. It's my gift to you. The opportunity to go out with a bang. Bottoming, we're bottoming. Let's make this the last week of your life, the best week of your life. We'll spend every moment together, and we'll end it with a huge party, a celebration of Beyonce. A whole week with Milo? That sounds like heaven. And it's exciting enough to distract you from your imminent death. You're in. You're going to get so many posthumous followers. I'm almost jealous. Oh, and we should start considering the party aesthetics right away. We need some big, memorable main event at the party, something that'll honor your true essence, Beyonce. And, Obby, it should be a Snapchat friendly. Any ideas? Your time to shine. Quick, what's the perfect way to one, entertain your party guests, two, commemorate your entire existence, and three, impress Milo. You have friends give toasts in your honor, but it'll be emotionally moving, and everyone will get shit faced. Two birds, one stone. Aha! That's perfect! It'll be like celebrating your life by entwining it with the lives of the people you loved. I had no idea you were so profound, Beyonce. But if I know anything about drunken party toasts, we're going to need pre-approval on these speeches. We've got no choice but to conduct a rehearsal immediately. You spend the afternoon getting all your friends together and breaking the big news. You're dying next week. Shockingly, they all seem pretty okay with it. <laughs> you humbly request that they deliver a toast for you at the party. And just to be safe, you write the speeches yourself. All right, lovely people. Welcome to the rehearsal for Beyonce's elegant end of life blowout bash. Let's proceed with the heartfelt eulogies. <gasps> oh, gee, I can't believe Beyonce is dying. I'm like totally sad about it. Uh... But honestly, being dead totally isn't even a thing. Ghosts have more fun. My favorite memory of Beyonce is when, ahem, he saved a school bus of orphans from falling into a pit of lava using only his mega thick ass cheeks. Yes! Can we get some peaches in the chat for those who have it? If you got the peach, drop it in here right now. Damn. Anyway, let's pour one out for Beyonce. And pour another one out for Beyonce's butt. Those cheeks will be missed. Mega thick! Yes! I am the only person who is kind of weirded out that Beyonce is apparently dying next week. No? Just me? Cool. Anyway, Beyonce was apparently the most emotionally intelligent, thoughtful, and woke friend I've ever had. Here's to you. Psst, Beyonce. You don't think people will actually fall for this, do you? How dare you! Ahem. Gather one and all, I shall now read aloud this speech commemorating Beyonce. 
It is a speech that I definitely wrote myself. Besides me, Beyonce, what was the greatest warrior of all time? His legacy shall be written in the stars next to Hercules and Orion. I drink in his honor. What incredible toast, everyone. I think it's quite clear that Beyonce touched so many lives, including mine. Here's one last rehearsal toast from yours truly. Beyonce is a silly goose. We're all aware of that, but we must remember that geese are some of the sweetest and cutest birds in the whole wide world. I thought I knew what it meant to really fall in love with life, but watching Beyonce's constant elegant failures taught me that lesson all over again. Cheers, Bay. That went shockingly well. You spend the rest of your day getting totally drunk with your friends to practice for your party. All of that tomfoolery earns you six creativity. Damn, we are we are going to be so good with our stats. Since you're dying next week, Milo has been helping you live your last days to the fullest. Currently, the two of you are getting a super fancy pedicure where little fish eat the dead skin off your feet. Feels amazing, and it's hella Instagram worthy. That really hits the spot. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Fish give better pedicures than people. And I needed some R&R. &R. The non-stop life celebrating with you has been all consuming, but honestly, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. Mila looks at you with such bedroom eyes, your heart starts to race. It's a tender moment. While we're enjoying this tender moment, I thought we could talk deets for your end of life bash. I've been really immersing myself in the preparations, Beyonce. This might be some of the finest party planning work of my entire career. First off, the venue is insane. I got my boss to let me borrow her interdimensional penthouse. The ceiling is made of diamonds, and the bodyguards are literally four-dimensional. We're going to do this huge dramatic entrance for you where you burst out of a coffin. Cute, right? And the coffin outfit is a perfect amount of slutty. Trust me. Are my booty cheeks going to be out? Oh, and you're not going to believe the guest list. All the basics, sure, but we have some huge guests on here. I did not realize you had this kind of pull, darling. Keep it on the DL, but we got several prominent ghosts coming. Both Edison and Tesla. So things should get interesting. <laughs> but still, I feel like something's missing. I think we need a big, mind-blowing VIP surprise guest. Someone who can show up halfway through the party, uninvited, and have a poetic final embrace with you. A real moment, you know? Does anyone come to mind? Maybe a long-lost twin from whom you were separated at birth and never actually met? Mila's right. You definitely need a kick-ass special guest for your party. You don't have any long-lost twins that you know about, but you do know the perfect VIP to an invite. The obstetrician who was there for your birth, <clears throat> he ushered you into this world, and now he'll usher you out. Excuse me? Your obstetrician? Are you too close or something? Milo's doubtful, but you stand firm. You whip out your phone and call up Dr. John, the obstetrician who birthed you. Why, of course, I'll be the special guest at your party, Beyonce. In fact, I'll come discuss the details with you right now. That's imp how important you are to me. Oh my god. Within a few minutes, you hear the whirling of a helicopter overhead. A fancy looking man drops down from the chopper. It's your obstetrician, Dr. John. Oh my god, is that Elton John? Dear god, Beyonce, your obstetrician is Dr. Elton John? I, why didn't you say that earlier? I'm so excited you made me slightly raise my voice. That hasn't happened to me in like two decades. You must be Milo, Beyonce's beloved reaper. Yes, it is me, Dr. Elton John. Cheerio. I was knighted, so my full title is technically Sir Dr. Elton John. Hello, it's a pleasure. Big fan, Avi. I'm sure you're wondering about the deep, meaningful connection between me and Buyanse. Let me tell you the tale. You see, I used to be a world-renowned obstetrician, but the birth of Buyanse changed my life forever. As I watched Buyanse's mother suffer through a 52-hour 52 52 hour labor, I would have literally cut it out myself. I was struck with the profound beauty of all living things. It was such a meaningful, poetic birth that I was inspired to leave my medical career behind and become a musician. In a way, all of my success, my five Grammy Awards, my two Oscars, and of course, my beloved Disney Legends Award are all thanks to Beyonce. That makes perfect sense. You know, now that I think about it, I can sense an essence of Beyonce as the underlying fabric of all your songs. Exactly. And that's why I'm honored to be your special party VIP. I'll even waive my appearance fees. Now, what do you say the three of us go take my chopper for a joyride? Life is short, after all. You and Milo go for a helicopter ride with motherfucking Sir Dr. Elton John. Milo is super impressed. This is the best day of your life, 
easily. And you still got plenty of Milo quality time left before you die. You gain plus six charm and a very mature outlook on your own mortality. Oh my god. You're intrigued by the sight of Milo forcing an unenthusiastic joy to try on a series of costumes and wigs. Luckily, she rips them all off before you sit down. Or else we'd actually have to show you art of that. <laughs> okay, fine. I see that you're not that interested in shallow fashionista joy, but I have lots of other ideas for your new brand. What about hard-boiled private investigator joy? Or manic pixie dream girl joy? Or sassy divorcee joy? Oh, that last one gave me chills. Those are all dumb. Also, in order to be a divorcee, shouldn't I have already been married? Hmm. Good point. Wait, your wedding could be the plot of episode one? This coven stuff writes itself. Milo, I already told you. I don't need a new brand. I don't even have a brand. The idea that my personality is merely a trademark is dehumanizing and reductive. Joy, you're taking this too personally. Of course personalities are complex and beautiful, but everybody still needs their own brand. You're more so than anyone else. Every season of the coven requires some fresh renewal or adaptation in order to keep audiences interested. Think of it as a character growth. I'd rather think of it as a pass. Come on, it already makes sense. Just look at all the different brands you've had in the past two seasons. Like what? Like Insecure But Brave Joy, who fought to fill the shoes of previous coven leader Grace after her tragic death. Or Grim Interdimensional Survivor Joy, who used the quantum compass to hop through dimensions after the herald of the longest night killed hope. Or, my personal favorite, stoic, heartbroken Joy, who was forced to move on after Liam disappeared in episode 9 until you two properly broke up on good terms. She and Liam dated? I dabble on some forums, which is why you should just trust me with your next brand transformation. I know Joy Johnson Jojima better than you do. Actually, Mila knows Joy Johnson Jojima only second best, at least. That's what you're going to make them believe. What brand should Joy adopt for next season? Exuberant Salsa Champion! <laughs> that sounds fabulous! Um, what? That makes no sense at all. I'm a force of light and good in the world. My brand doesn't include dancing. Which is what makes it so unexpected. We should get you a salsa costume right away. I'll get my edible arrangement guy to make you a fruit hat before you can even say, Arriba! No! Milo, I'm serious. I cannot and do not want to dance. Oh, psst, don't be silly. You can dance. I remember when the esteemed Bob Ross always said, talent is pursued interest. Anything you can practice, you can do. I do understand we're on a time crunch, though. Showbiz waits for no one. I'll sign us up for salsa classes immediately. Goodbye. Hey, great idea, Joy. Divide and conquer. You go start practicing your steps and your twirls. I'll make headway on the costumes. You stay here and work with me, Buyonce, since this is your brilliant idea. Tell me, do you envision Joy wearing a blood orange mini dress or a beaded bracelet? You spend the evening helping Milo brainstorm Salsa Joy ideas. It's not going to go anywhere, of course, but when has it ever been the point? <laughs> oh, wait, that got creativity up, I'm sure. The Classical Palette. Want to drink the Classical Palette? I tried to harness the beauty of art in a potion. It enhances the inner beauty of the world. All locations will become more beautiful. Just bask in it. Okay. okay. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. Okay, so now get creativity up, right? You find yourselves trapped in yet another one of Coach's intermittable safety workshops. There's a runaway trolley barreling through the railroad. Ahead on the tracks, there are five people tied up and unable to move. You are standing next to a lever that could switch on the trolley to another track. But there is one person on that track as well. What do you do? Hmm. There's gotta be a way I killed six, all six people. I just know it. Coach, this is not a survival scenario. This is a classic trolley problem. A thought experiment, first proposed by English philosopher Philippa Foote in 16, 1967. You mean English survivalist Philippa Foote. I guess the trolley problem doesn't have any practical survival implications at all. We're tied to some train tracks in the woods. The trolley is coming. Who could have foreseen this? You see kids, this is why you should always pay attention to safety class. Oh well, at least we'll die together. No! You're not gonna die before you touch a hot groin at this camp! <laughs> There's an innocent satyr manning, manning the lever. You just need to find a way to convince him to pull the lever and kill the guy on the other tracks. Start a loud conversation about all the ways you plan to benefit monster kind if you survive. Wrong lever! See, that's, a la that's the thing I don't want. 
I don't want to pull the wrong lever and get us all killed. You whisper your plan to your friends, and they seem to be on board, except for Dahlia, who's trying to bite through the trolley tracks. I say, friends, it is shame that we all perish before completing our grand humanitarian project, which is... Yes, says the satyr, clearly interested. An app. I love apps, says the satyr. An app for what? An app that helps you... Uh, Dahlia, help me, please. Mm, nom nom nom. What was that, says the satyr? I can't hear you with that train track in your mouth. I said, an app that helps you make tough moral decisions. Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> oh, wow, says the satyr. I wish I had that app right about now. Yes, well, if you let that trolley hit us, you'll never get it because we'll be dead, which is a thing that can happen to all of us, or whatever. Well, that makes my decision a lot easier, says the satyr, flipping the lever and dooming the guy on the other track to a horrible death. Thanks, guys. <laughs> he helps untie you from the track. Damn that melodrama villain for tying you up and leaving you here. Well, you can share that up with me now. Uh... Of course, I've actually been working on a moral decision-making app for some time now. I'm hoping it will help me understand why murder is wrong, but war is fine. Oh, great, let's test it. I'm going to ask if it was right to save you all from the trolley survey says... No. The guy who died was a renowned pediatric heart surgeon, and 11 children will die today when he fails to show up for the transplant surgeries. Fuck them kids. Well, at least you saved... He had also perfected a cure for trolley-related injuries, which he had not yet shared with anyone. He could have saved all of you if only he'd lived. Haha, <laughs> well, we we'll live and learn, right? Or don't live and don't learn. The choice is your safety. While you frolic with your totally alive friends, you gain four fun, two creativity, and zero regrets. Hell yes. You're gonna die in less than 48 hours, but honestly, this has been the best week of your entire life. This is all thanks to Milo. They've been spending every moment with you planning your big party, helping you celebrate all the best parts of being alive. Currently, the two of you are admiring some blooming pink cherry blossom trees together. Aren't the blossoms gorgeous, Beyonce? Technically, cherry blossoms are supposed to bloom in the spring, not in the summer. But I called in a few favors with nature so you could see them now. It'd be a downright tragedy if you died before seeing these flowers, after all. Milo sighs happily, leans on your shoulder. They whip out their phone and start texting. You realize that this is one of your favorite parts of life quiet, comfortable silence when someone you adore is texting right beside you. You enjoy the moment. Oh, look, Beyonce, the caterer for the party just confirmed that they can make the amuse-bouche. I can't believe that this party is tomorrow. Life flies by so quickly. By the way, have you started contemplating your big party toast? It'll be the total climax of the evening. And really, the encapsulation of what made your life worth living. No pressure, though. Okay, it's time to impress the fuck out of Milo with your big party speech. You've been working on it, so this should be pretty easy. You'll just have to make up two poetic metaphors and one mind-blowing closing line. The end of a beautiful song? I guess. Choose one. A jazz solo where improvisation meets beauty. And as I prepare to leave, I want to tell you all about the thing I think everyone should do at least once before leaving this realm. We should all have an orgy. Ah, yes, yes. Your words writing so true, so wise. I should have put eat ass. Your words ring so true, so wise. I have brought death to so many people. And I couldn't have put it better myself. Death truly is the end of a beautiful song. When you think it's like that, my job as a Grim Reaper acquires a whole new layer of meaning, doesn't it? And life. Life is such poetry, Beyonce. You make life and death make so much sense. Of course, if life is clearly a jazz solo where improvisation meets beauty, it can only end with the death of a, or the end of a beautiful song. These two things are such perfect complement for each other. Such an obvious balance. Ah, when you put it like that, you make me fall in love with life all over again. Beyonce, I didn't know you had such poetry in your heart. Thank you for sharing it with me. Finding the poetry in life may sound cheesy, but it's so necessary. Sadly, there are so many people spending their days complaining and focusing on what makes them hurt. So much frustration, anger, and sadness. It's true that life can be hard, but it's not a good or bad thing. It's a complicated entanglement of many things that spin and spin until it stops spinning when you least expect it. Will you welcome death as the final chapter to all of the devi oh, the delicious things your soul savored? Or will you ask yourself why you never got the chance to have an orgy as you realize all oh, that could be and wasn't? I should have put eat ass. Then it could have come for a circle from last week. Then there's other people, the ones that, as you say, see life as a jazz solo where improvisation meets beauty. It's so sweet to watch them die. Their soul truly sings, Beyonce as they found the little miracles hidden in their day by day. They remember all the kisses, all the dances, all the laughter, 
every celebration where they end up embracing the sun as it arised, surrounded by loved ones. So embraked of life. They look so at peace. And they take my hand. They tell me about those beautiful memories. Milo takes your hand. How can you not love life when, in between all that pain, it has the potential to harbor all that raw, aggressive beauty? Isn't everything weird and wonderful? If we had only met before, if only you and I had more time, we could have had an orgy together. I should have put eaten ass! Imagine that. No, I choose to focus on what's good. I am happy that we meet now, Beyonce. And that I got to know you this well before you go. Come! Milo pulls you into a vibrant, passionate dance. Tomorrow will be a sad day, but also a wonderful day. Let's dance to life and all that makes this wild ride something so memorable. And to you, to you and me. Let's dance forever till the world ends. Dance with me. They look at you so intensely. It's like they pierce the very core of yourself. Ah, so close to the end. And yet, feeling like life is just blossoming into such a feast of emotions. But who cares? Today you dance. Today you dance forever. All right, that was the end. Last day of summer is here. I'm gonna die. Yes, today you die. Hey, Beyonce, we both know what happens now. Are you ready? As ready as you'll ever be. Your big party goes off without a hitch. It's a true celebration of life. Your life. After several hours of dancing and fun, everyone has gone to watch a meteor shower or elsewhere. It has been beautiful, hasn't it? I've loved doing this with you. I didn't know that well before, but now that I've helped arrange a celebration of your life, I think I know you much more better. Much more better? Much better. And I must admit, I like what I see. Okay, it should happen any moment now. I'll get a ping on my phone for the gig. I asked to take any gig nearby tonight, so it should be the one that brings you to the other side. You two hold hands and wait. And wait. Weird. Let me check something. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay, so funny story. I think I misread the gig. It wasn't you who's dying tonight, but an other Beyonce. It's a pretty common name, you know. If only I paid a bit more attention to my gigs. My bad. So, you're not gonna die. I mean, you will someday, but not tonight. Still, we came on celebrating life, you know what I mean. Milo starts undressing while entering the lake. They throw you a short, suggestive oh, glance. <laughs> Your heart stops for a second, but like in a good way. Yes, come through! You join Milo in the lake. They're so free, so in love with life. It's inspiring. You could learn a lot from them. Like, how meaningless it is to worry about death when you could spend every minute basking in the earthly wonders of being alive. And that night you celebrate life in a feast of flesh and desire. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I loved that. That was so good.